Hello, I'm Louise Shackson from the ODI. I'm delighted to give this presentation for the University of Cape Town's course on evidence-informed policymaking. The brief I was given was to enthuse people about using evidence more effectively. At first, I was a bit worried because most people find talking about evidence to be pretty dull. But then I thought about the government officials I've worked with over the years across the world and what they've done to improve the ways they have used evidence. I've been impressed by many of them. So I thought, what is it about them that makes them so great at their jobs? How do they think about evidence? I want to explore this a bit more in this presentation. Now it might not be quite what you're expecting, and please don't take it too seriously, but I hope the following images will trigger some thoughts about how you, as senior policy officials, can think about your job in a more evidence-informed way. So here's the first one. Sometimes you need to think a bit like a professional boxer. As a senior policymaker, you need to be ready to use evidence to defend your policies. You might disagree with your colleagues over the direction a policy is taking or how it's being scaled up. Or you might be helping your minister win debates in Parliament or defend their decisions in public. You might be about to go into a budget battle with the Treasury. And if you're a Director General, you may need to be able to win arguments against your colleagues who are going to be other DGs. It's not a criticism of the system, it's just the way it works. So like a boxer, you need to be fit to duck and dive with the politics of the issues so that you can spot opportunities to use evidence to make a difference. Evidence is your boxing gloves. They need to be really well constructed. It's no good having shiny leather gloves if they fall apart when you use them. So good gloves, and by that I mean good evidence, show your colleagues that you have a detailed understanding of the situation. You know who's affected by the problem. You know how they're affected. You have evidence about what needs to change and why, when you know what has and hasn't worked in the past, and you understand all the risks. Having good evidence gloves doesn't mean you'll win every time. But if you have weak gloves or no gloves at all, well, you'll just be in trouble from the start. But policymaking isn't just a combat sport. You need to know when to think like a boxer and when other types of thinking about evidence are going to be more helpful. Sometimes you need to think a bit like a ship's captain. Implementing policies is hard. They turn out differently from how you thought they would when they were designed. Sometimes they're just a little bit different, but sometimes things happen and you run into big problems that you just hadn't anticipated. So you need to think about the process of developing and implementing policy as a voyage of discovery. You need to think a bit like one of those ship's captains who set out to explore the world. They knew generally which direction they were heading in, but they didn't know exactly where they would end up. But what's important is that they didn't set out unless they had a compass, a captain's chart, a reasonable weather forecast, and a good crew. These are exactly like the tools in your evidence toolkit. Evidence helps you answer questions such as, are we heading in the right direction? What does it look like ahead? Where are the hazards that could sink us? Who else has made a journey like this? And what happened? And like a ship's captain, you don't use evidence once when you set off on your journey and then put it all in a cupboard for the rest of the voyage. You should be regularly looking at the weather forecast and checking the accuracy of your charts. To think like a ship's captain, you should be thinking about using evidence pretty much constantly. But you and your crew aren't there just to get the ship to its planned destination no matter what happens. You need to interact with people because they're the passengers on this policy voyage and you need to really understand what they think about it. The last thing you want is a mutiny. And in evidence terms, this means not just doing research on an issue, but ensuring that the different ways that evidence is generated are as participatory and as inclusive as possible. 
But evidence-informed policy making isn't just about winning arguments and making sure you know where you're going. Sometimes you need to imagine you're managing a wildlife park. There's a lot of evidence out there and not all of it is going to agree with you. So it's a bit like managing a wildlife park with lots of different animals. Most of them aren't where you want them to be and some of them might be shy and you have to work hard to find them. However, some might be easy to spot and fun to watch, like this warthog. But wherever your evidence animals are, all of them are valuable and you need to manage all of them as effectively as you can because your livelihood as a park manager depends on it. However, evidence won't always tell you what you want it to. Sometimes evidence can feel downright threatening. Researchers and the media can be very critical of policymakers, and this can make your job very difficult. But you can't ignore them and hope they'll go away. You need to engage with them and understand their perspectives. They may have good evidence, they may not. But if you already have good evidence when you're challenged, you'll be able to decide how to respond quickly and effectively. So you need to understand what all the evidence is saying. You need experience and sometimes courage to work out what evidence you need and where you're going to find it. But you can't just sit on the sideline complaining, for example, that researchers aren't talking to you. You need a good pair of binoculars to find where the evidence is and then you need to get as close to it as you can so that you really understand it. So, sometimes you need to think like a boxer, sometimes like a ship's captain, and sometimes the, like the manager of a wildlife park. But there's one more thing, and I think this is possibly the most important. Thinking like an evidence-informed policymaker means thinking like an artist. Art isn't just about painting pretty pictures or making drawings that are as accurate as possible. Great art makes us think deeply about the world around us. It asks questions about how we see things. It can be challenging. Art is full of meaning, even if it takes you a while to work out what that meaning is. Artists understand when to use paint or stone or light or wood or video or sound and many other materials. And they also understand how to combine them most effectively to represent the issue they're interested in. In a similar way, you need to understand when to use different types of evidence and how to use them in different combinations so that you can help people understand the world better or to see things they didn't see before. Listening to a great artist discussing their work is fascinating. And the policymakers who have inspired me understand the art of evidence-informed policymaking. They know very well that it's not a science. But it's important to remember that no matter how much effort you put into your art, other people are likely to see it differently. You can use evidence to describe as accurately as possible what you think the issue is, but it's inevitable that someone else will see it differently. We are all subject to biases in how we view the world, particularly when we value the things that are at stake. Evidence helps you think about the big ideas and arguments, but it can't provide a single answer. You have to be prepared to take account of other voices and other opinions. You can use evidence to try to persuade people, but you can't force them to disregard their point of view and see what you're seeing. They may just see it differently. However, you can use evidence to ask fundamental questions. People see things differently based on what they value, on their experiences and on what they believe in. And you can use evidence to explore different voices and perspectives. You can use it to help understand what the big ideas and arguments are so that you can work out how they influence what you're trying to do. And as senior policymakers, your job is to train the people who work with you to think like artists so that they also understand all the different points of view and where they come from. So to conclude, 
You need to use your wisdom and experience to make judgments about where to go and how to get there. What evidence does is help you, as senior policymakers, be satisfied that you will be able to stand by those judgments when you need to. Now, I can't tell you exactly what you need to do to do your job in a more evidence-informed way. What I've learned from the people who've inspired me is that there's no template. But if you have enough evidence so that you can think a bit like a boxer and a bit like a ship's captain and a bit like a wildlife manager and a bit like an artist, well, I think you'll do just fine. Thank you very much.